So the ChatGPT Mastery course is up and running, and all the content I've made up until this point has either been me using ChatGPT or talking about it. So it's time to hop off the ChatGPT train and touch on Google Gemini, the AI creative powerhouse and the go-to for AI videos and images right now. That is our focus today. I'm going to be teaching you the Google Gemini interface, all the tools and buttons and gimmicks and what they all do at a basic level so you understand how to navigate Google Gemini and use it and get the full value out of it and make sure you're not overlooking or neglecting anything, which would really suck, especially if you're paying for it. And if you're not paying for any AI in 2025, I don't know why you wouldn't be, but if you're not, then definitely consider paying for Google Gemini and any subscription with it. It is a top contender right now, and it is definitely worth your money. So give that some thought. Okay, so what is Gemini? Well, simply put, it's the name Google chose for their artificial intelligence, their LLM, their large language model. And in case you don't know, a large language model is essentially a very powerful computer program that's been trained on a large amount of text and data from the internet. I have really been enjoying Google Gemini lately, especially when it comes to Gemini's creative potential. If your goal is to create amazing AI videos that lip sync with audio perfectly, edit any image you want almost as good as Photoshop simply with text and sending a few images and saying, substitute this, replace that, change this, turn any deep research into a infographic, a website, or even a mini podcast with two people that sound totally real, or even just, I don't know, make a picture book for children, which can all be done through simply prompting in Gemini, typing in that text and watching the magic happen. So when it comes to creativity, Google Gemini is the best LLM in my opinion. Yes, even better than ChatGPT and Claude and Grok when it comes to its creative potential. Not really the other things, even though it's great at the other things too. Okay, so that'll suffice as a good introduction to Google Gemini before we dive in. And now I'm going to walk you through from the left to right, the Google Gemini interface. Okay, so welcome to Google Gemini. This is the interface when you sign in and it is currently September 3rd, 2025. So this can change over time, but this is how it is now. And hopefully it doesn't change too much. Let's go left to right here. So if I expand the menu, this is where you can see all your recent chats. This is where you can click to start a new chat or you can start a temporary chat. This is where you can search up any of your chats. And then you also can collapse that. Let's just select new chat. And this is a feature they're pushing for people to test, which is Storybook. So that is simply where you type in whatever, give it whatever story, and it creates a picture book with text and the whole thing out of it. Kind of nuts. And gems, you might be wondering, what the heck is that? Well, it's like GPTs in ChatGPT. It's customized versions with special instructions and files and stuff of Gemini that Google has made, other people can make. You can make your own here, give it your instructions, add extra files for reference, give it a name, and keep coming back to that. So I guess you could consider this as a project where or a folder for your chats, but it's not because there's no place to put chats into here. This is only a customizable space that you can work within, but you can't transfer chats in here, if that makes sense. So it's close to a project or a folder, but it's not the same. And that is one of the biggest cons I have with Google Gemini. For God knows what reason, they don't have projects or folders for your chats. I mean, Grok does now, Claude does, ChatGPT does, but not Gemini for some reason. But they do have gems, so that's fine at least. And you can go in here and do whatever you need to. They have some to offer and show you, like a writing editor, and just go ahead and work within that. But it'll only pop up as a chat. Like you can't add anything to this and build it like a folder or a project would in ChatGPT. Kind of annoying. So there's my rant there. It's just custom versions of Gemini that help you get specific results each time that you can come back to. So give those a shot. Now, as I said, these are your recent chats. Your most recent chats will go to the top. If you click these bubbles, you can rename it, pin chats, share them, delete them. Okay. And then if you go to the bottom here, settings and help, saved info, apps. These are 
how it brings together the whole Google ecosystem, the Google workspace, which is the beauty of Gemini, because I would say most of us can agree that Google is, in my opinion, much better than Microsoft when it comes to emails and the docs and the Google drives, the calendar, the whole thing just works amazing together. And this accesses all of that for the account that you choose with it. Kind of nice. And I mean, even YouTube, right? Because Google owns YouTube. So it can reference YouTube videos very well. And YouTube music, it's it's nuts. It's very cool because of that, because it's connected to the Google workspace. So keep that in mind. Okay, scheduled actions. This is anything you want to just prompt it to schedule and remind you about or to do later um, or to keep working on. Now theme, light, dark. I just have it to match my system. You can create public links so anyone can see your chats and what you're sharing and just give it out to the to the world and anyone can come in and read it. Uh, this is where you upgrade, manage your subscription. I'm on plus. Didn't go for ultra, but I think all I need is plus for now because I'm also trying to learn Claude and Grok too. So I'm paying for a lot. And then help center privacy, send any feedback of what you want to improve or any advice you have, which does help them. At least I like to think it does that they reference it and say, okay, we should maybe add folders like Peyton's saying, and then they can organize the chats. Wouldn't that be something? Yes, it would. So that's the quick little rundown of the left sidebar here. And you can collapse it to get more space. Not that you really need it, but yeah. So I'll go to new chat and I'll just go ahead and collapse it. Oh, and I think I already said this. Please make sure you're renaming your chats if you want to find them easily when you search them. A lot of people neglect that. Okay, collapsing that. So they only have two models, which is kind of nice. I mean, even ChatGPT 5, it's like, okay, now everything is clapped into one model. But no, no, no. If you go there now, they have ChatGPT 5 auto and fast and quick thinking and thinking and... <laughs> Kind of confusing, but basically 2.5 Pro is going to give you more accurate answers because it's going to reason and think through it more. So if your focus is accuracy and less hallucinations and the task and prompt you're giving it is more complex, then use 2.5 Pro. And if you just want some quick help, quick responses, not worried too much about it because 2.5 Flash will still give you good accurate answers. This just handles everything better, especially if you give it more complicated tasks. Like it says, reasoning, math code. But 2.5 flash is great for all around stuff like image generation. So as you can see, I said, hello, hello. And that was much quicker. And then if I said, hello, hello, you're going to notice something happens here. Maybe I'll just do 2.5 pro for this chat. Oh, it opened a new chat. Yeah. So another con is you can't switch models within the same chat. If you switch, it'll open up a new chat and you can only use one model. So you can only use 2.5 flash the whole time or 2.5 pro the whole time. And if you try to switch, in the middle of a chat, it'll open a new chat. Kind of strange, but it is what it is. Okay, this is the nicely laid out prompt bar, toolbar. This is where you ask Gemini any question you have. Like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so if I ask something simple like that, you'll see these little keys and that'll show you where it's pulling the information from. You can like the response, say it's bad. You can redo it to just refresh it, have it try again, share, export, copy. A lot of people get into the habit of copying all the way up, right? And dragging their mouse all the way up as they copy something. But you can just hit this and it copies everything immediately. Big time saver. And then more. This is a double check, which is actually quite useful. It just goes through it all, double checks it all again on Google and that's quite helpful and then you can hit understand the changes there so here it says it's likely similar to the statement based on what Google what he, they found on Google okay and you can do listen where <laughs> It reads it for you and you can just listen to it crazy and report legal issue. Hopefully you don't have to do that. So there's some quick things. Now let's go down here, add files. This is where you add files and the best files that I've mentioned time and time again, stick with PDFs and TXT files that you send it or images. All that stuff handles very well. You can add from Drive, which is pretty awesome. You can, it can just pull up to Google Drive and it's all connected through Google, which is so good. You can import any code you need to from GitHub or what have you. And yeah, 
That's the plus file. You will use that to provide it context to give it better answers. Now tools, this is where the creative potential shines and it gets fun. So you have deep research where it thinks for a long period of time, gives you a giant spit out answer. Um, that is, it's just more thorough research. It's going through a bunch of sources like hundreds and pulling from them and going through them and reading them in accordance with what you're asking it to do. And it spits out this giant document that you can refresh, read through, look at all the sources it pulled from it's great create videos with veo3 so it's gonna ask me to start a new chat for the videos you can give it a photo for reference and this is simply the best video model that's out right now it is the most realistic it incorporates sound with what you're saying and it's it's just really cool okay then create images so this banana you're like what the heck is that that's nano banana which is their new image model and basically the gist is you can now send a picture of yourself with your parents on vacation let's say and you're like oh i wish i could just post it with just me there. Well, you can now ask, please remove my parents from the image and keep everything as is, and it'll do it, and it'll look amazing. Or remove my parents and then put Will Ferrell next to me and say, look who I ran into. <laughs> and it'll put an amazing, if you give it an image of Will Ferrell, it'll put an amazing image of him right next to you in place of your parents. And anything you can think of, please remove the background, blur the background, change this thing. Apparently it's even in Photoshop now, so you can highlight an object and be like, change the pattern to this and it'll do it almost perfectly. So crazy potential there. And just a heads up, it's watermarked. So there is a way to know, I think it's synth ID, but there's a way to know that they're fake. And a lot of people are going to be using this to clickbait you and show things that didn't happen. So watch out for that. But yeah, you simply just play around with that. You play around with videos and you'll learn how to use these things. And the create images is, it's very cool. I played around with that earlier. Quick rant here. It was a Pinterest. See, if I scripted, I couldn't do this. It was a Pinterest image of some glowing person sitting in a booth alone. And I wanted to put headphones on them, AirPod Maxes. And then behind them was like this painting and restaurant at the booth they're sitting at. And I wanted to replace that with a wallpaper of the last Last Supper for like a Christian playlist on Apple Music for me as an album cover. And I simply gave it the image, told it those things, and it did it, which was insane. And it even looked exactly like The Last Supper was just a wallpaper that they put on. Crazy stuff. Okay, onwards. Canvas. Uh, let's, I'll just show you. Explain Canvas within Canvas. <laughs> So Canvas is Google's version of, uh, usually I say that, how it's Google's version of Google Doc, but that would make sense here. So basically, Canvas is how you can just continue to work. What the fuck is going on? Okay, so here's a pretty cool little mishap that happened. <laughs> so it took that quite literally instead of using the tool and gave me this option that I can now draw anything in and clear it and draw layered content. And here's the code for it. So that's what I mean when I say creative potential here, but we're going to close out and say, write an essay explaining Canvas within Gemini. Okay, so this is what I meant. So Canvas is basically how you can just stay working within these AIs, which is exactly what ChatGPT's is called, it's Canvas 2. But now I can delete words, type out whatever, I can go back, I can change the styles of the text, bold, bullet point, all this stuff, just within the AI without going to Google Docs or something else. Although, I could just go here and share it to Google Docs, export to Docs, copy content, all that, and this is where it gets fun. So Canvas opens up a lot, especially if you do deep research, it'll open up a whole thing. And something I encourage you to try is to do deep research on something. And then when you're done, go to create and do each of these, do a web page and it'll make a whole web page on it. I mean, I'll just show you. It's nuts. And then you can do infographic. You can do a little quiz. And the coolest one by far is the podcast one where it creates two people talking and you cannot tell their AI. You cannot. And it sounds super realistic and it explains it in like two to three minutes or whatever. And it's, it's so fascinating. And it always gives you the code right here. And I can give you a explanation of how to actually use this code and take it outside of Gemini if you want, but uh, let me know in the comments, I suppose. But there we go. There's a little decent um, website or infographic.
But yeah, and I could go back to that original one, right, where I pulled it from, and then create an audio overview, which is like the podcast thing, and it'll code that too. So those are all the tools, <laughs> which is just so cool. Like the potential for all these is nuts. You, you actually have to dive into them, but the, the point of this video is just to give you an overview of where the tools are and a quick discussion around what they do. So I'm going to cancel that, make sure we covered everything. Oh, guided learning. Big one here. This is how you learn anything very well, anything you want. And the beauty of it is, if you're like, just tell me the answer, it's going to be like, whoa, whoa, how about we try this then? It's going to push back a little bit and really encourage you to learn and help you learn much better than if you were to just get frustrated and ask for the answer on a regular chat. So definitely try out guided learning. Very useful. I'm using it right now to study the Bible and scripture and know it better. So there's that audio overview being generated. So while that's happening, we'll I'll wrap up here top right here files in this chat so this is where it's taking all the things it's making here the infographics and the code and all that and it's just an easy place to access them within the chat without having to scroll all the way up especially if you have a long fat chat you can just go to files and select the right one instead of going all the way up so here's the understanding gemini one here's the interactive guide one there's that and now this is obviously your google account which you can switch and adjust and make sure you're logged into the right account to have everything connected in the google Google workspace. Whew. Okay, so there is your walkthrough of Google Gemini. And let me double check that's all the tools. If you hit this, it'll stop whatever it's doing. If you hit that again, it'll send whatever chat you type. And remember, if you hit enter, it'll also send. So shift enter is your best friend when prompting, right? And then if I hit enter, that would send. But shift enter, and I can expand it, see it full screen. So keep that in mind too. Okay, and for the hell of it, since I didn't show you the images or the video or anything, I'll just show you this audio aspect at least. So if we play this. <laughs> like we're cooked. <laughs> that is that is so good. I, I can't get over that still even now. And you can download it. Um, anyway, so that's an example of the creative potential, but I'll let you find out how good Nano Banana and Google Veo is and got to learn it too. I mean, that's just the beauty of Gemini. It's fun. It's play in a way. So there you have it. That is the interface of Google Gemini and what all the tools and buttons and things do. Quick overview. I'll make sure I'll show you more next time and you guys can reach out in the comments if you want any specific tool highlighted and me walking you through. Maybe you want me to go through Nano Banana or Google Veil 3. Just let me know. But like I was saying, Google Gemini is just fun. It's possibly the most fun I've had with AI which is weird saying, but it just lets you test out and let your creative juices flow by trying out this AI generation and this image nano banana adjuster and things like the little podcast clip you got a taste of. And it's fun. It's play. And this idea of play, a lot more of us could use in our lives and helps us learn and enjoy learning. So think about that. Before I leave you, if your AI tool of choice is ChatGPT, then I have a paid offer for you below. It is paid though. And there's another paid offer, which is my AI mentorship, which has launched. I'm excited about that one. That's my main business. So if you want to check that out, there's the paid links. And above those, I'll have some free links, which are just some free value that you can dabble in. And you can check those out too. And on this topic of creativity that we've been talking about, writing is one of the best creative forms of expression. And I've learned how to leverage AI with my writing to make my writing just amazing and higher quality, more output, and to refine it and improve it. So if you want to learn how I do that, then watch this video here. Okay, that's all I got. Give Google Gemini a try. Thanks for watching. Peace.